Boogie, drop that beat. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Talking Out Loud with Miss Talkative. Everything I say is my own opinion, alleged, and strictly entertainment purposes. Remember, I'm just talking out loud. Please like, share, subscribe, comment on the video. Let me know what you think. Now, I watched Stormy interview with B. Simone. And from what I gather, B. Simone can't possibly be a Love and Mirror Tunsville watcher. I believe, and that's probably why Stormy went and interviewed with her. One, because she has a huge platform and she need the she is searching for sympathy because she know the way that she dismissed Kyle, her COO, was, it's messed up. And she's going to wound up having to pay for that somehow, some way. Stormy, is, Stormy knows she messed up. And I don't feel sorry for Stormy, not one bit. But I just wish B. Simone had a head. I wish she had a, did some research, watched a few episodes that involved Stormy, you know, did something, got into, um, did some type of research, asked, or asked around, did something, so she would be able to come back and ask Stormy some questions because Stormy's sitting up there trying to play on people for sympathy, trying to act like somebody else, everything that happened to her, everything that happened to her business was somebody else's fault. Stormy took no part in the demise or the downfall of Canvas. But when she was on Love and Mary Tunsfield, Stormy was trying to act like she was that she was that girl, telling people, you ain't got enough to come for me, when actually Stormy fit right in with the company or the person that she was yelling at because she was broke her dog on self. Stormy, she up here uh, trying to play on people for sympathy would be Simone, but on Love and Mary Tunsfield, where was the humbleness when she was uh, buying Destiny a Gucci purse? When she was laughing at Destiny um, beauty supply store Madani, not having customers, never being open, and how Destiny was begging for Stormy products. Had Stormy been a, a real businesswoman with knowing that uh, Destiny had a whole beauty supply store? with empty shelves and Stormy didn't take her up on her offer to put some of her products in her store talking about go through my distributor knowing doggone well she didn't do it because she because Stormy she's not going to help another person get ahead I don't think it had anything to do with a distributor I just think that Stormy likes to she doesn't she's not going to help another person get ahead but stormy sit up here trying to play sympathy taking no accountability talking about some man that she can't find forged her signature took out loans refinanced the loans and racked up all of these loans and liens and uh, against her and her company and this man got away scot-free come on now stummy she must think that the people are really dumb stupid naive gullible come on now stormy took no accountability she admitted to having to settle and consolidate the, the loans and liens. But she won't admit that she is the person that racked up everything, in my opinion. Stormy's sitting up here flaunting around. 
trying to be something that she's not. She didn't need that big old house to be on Love and Mary Tunsville. Letitia and, and Marceau live right across the street from a gas station. But Stormy had to make sure she got noticed, got rec recognized to be on Love and Mary Tunsville. She went the extra mile because she seen that her friend, Latrice, had got cast for Bell Collective and Stormy missed her chance or didn't get cast for Bell Collective. So she's like, oh, okay, I, I got to do, be doing as just as well as Latrice when she didn't have it to do. She didn't have... She didn't have the funds to go and buy this um, dramatic house, all this land. So I believe that was the start of Stormy taking out all these loans. So she can have cash flow to flaunt around, to have people talking about her. And so she could go and... Um, get this uh, nice truck so sh people can actually be like oh yeah she's um, she's black excellence she deserves to be on Love of Mary Tunsville everything that Stormy has showed us on Love of Mary Tunsville has been a lie when her and Marceau was arguing over that hundred dollars they was really they were really arguing over a hundred dollars because they both needed it real bad in my opinion stormy and her mama was using all of this energy all these resources to seek out mail to get stormy to to um get stormy cast for love mary tunsville but they didn't use not one of those resources to locate the man that supposedly ran off with Stormy's money. Make it make sense. And you got a person working for your company where you don't have none of none of their information, no social security number. You didn't do no background check. You didn't do nothing on this person to the point where if you needed to be able to locate him to put him in the lineup come on now ain't no ain't nobody's that dumb and as money hungry as stormy is one thing she gonna do is always watch her money that's why kyle stated that every single month stormy lifestyle depleted the bank accounts every single month because Stormy's too busy trying to be something she's not. Stormy to keep talking about she didn't need Love and Mary Tunsville. She was she had made it before she got on Love and Mary Tunsville. She absolutely needed Love and Mary Tunsville. Because she was going broke. Her business was was going, it, it was depleting itself because of stormy wrongdoing. Her excessive spending, her trying to act like she, act, um, her trying to be with the Joneses, knowing doggone well, her last name is Steele. Stormy did all of this mess to herself and won't take accountability. And the only reason why Stormy decided to admit to the loans, the liens, and her company going under is because she's looking for sympathy and she feels as though that if she come out and start saying something, admitting to the things that people already know, it'll gain her some sympathy to the point where Probably people will um, look at Kyle as trying to tear down a black woman-owned business. It don't work that way. Stormy knows she messed up. Stormy ain't been doing interviews. And what they say, a hit dog will holler. Stormy is hollering loud. But 
Because all of a sudden, she out of the blue, she's doing doing an interview with B. Simone. When C Carlos asked Stormy, was she eight-figure rich? Stormy said, yeah, but what she meant was she's eight figures in debt. Stormy didn't show nothing. She didn't show her humbleness or anything on Love and Mary Transfer. She was around there trying to act like she was so much better than people, turning her nose up at people as if she was better. When all the while, she is broke. Carlos trying to push her on us, talking about some stormy. She going she gonna to do a business meeting, and she's going to get on her team. When that scene was played, people didn't do nothing but fall out laughing at Stormy. Because we was like, what is this? Who is this? But I get it. In order for Carlos to sell it to us, he had to sell it to his stuff first. He probably looked at it like, oh my goodness, what is this? Them people look like they were out there on the street panhandling and Stormy, she needed a scene. She needed some people to come in and film with. And she probably promised these people $20, enough for a get high or some food or something. To come in and do this, do the warehouse scene and just stand, they didn't have to do nothing, but just stand there. That's why the guy was up there smirking because they didn't know what the heck Stormy was talking about. They was just waiting on their money so they can get back out in the street and finish panhandling. And they want to try to throw it off on us like Stormy doing oh so well. That's why the only person to talk is said doggone cousin. The people didn't know what the world was going on in that shop. They look like they was waiting on, on their little funky $20 so they can get up out of there and get back to bed, get to, to whatever they do. Stormy We and you can tell that Stormy has not learned her lesson because she went through all of that and almost losing her business to Kyle coming in and saving her business and she gets rid of him and all of her and Stormy even though um I believe that Kyle was doing majority of all the work behind the scenes for Canvas, for Stormy Business. Stormy still did not master the fact of separating her business from pleasure. As soon, it all probably all went in one account, and she, as soon as it went in, she just started spending, started swiping. Stormy talking about what somebody else did to her business, but she wasn't showing no humbleness when she was at Essence Fest. She wasn't showing no type of humbleness when she was, you know, uh, pulling up to meet Melody in a Rolls Royce, trying to act like she was all that. You in the midst of being broke and having all these lawsuits against you, regardless if, no matter who brought them, her company has the has the liens, the lawsuits that she's being held accountable for, which, like I say, in my opinion, is her. There ain't no man, no no man in no suit. It's her, and she trying to act like she all that by pulling up. To meet Melody at a juice bar in a Rolls Royce. But now she want to try to psych people mind trying to seek sympathy for the mess that she did.
had Stormy came on Love of Mary Chanceville and just told just told her true story. Uh, I'm not saying she had to tell every bit of her story bit by bit, piece by piece. But had she just came on there, been humble, told her story that she's having to rebuild. No, she came on there trying to stun on everybody. I didn't need this. I could exit stage left at any time. But look at her now. Look at her now. Her mama up there dogging Melody out for minding her own business just because Melody is selling her uh, she's running her businesses out of her house and be, just because Stormy has a warehouse they thought Stormy was better when in fact Stormy should have been the first person to be at her house why she keep buying warehouses that she can't afford but she bragging about living on this huge plantation with way more than enough room even if she didn't want to work at her house, she have enough land where she could have put her own warehouse on her residence. Where she didn't have to continue to pay out rent and, and all this extra overhead that she really can't afford. Betty was using all this energy to come after mail. Not one time did I hear her call out anybody that supposedly took Stormy money, forced Stormy name. Not one time. Stormy and Betty was up there bragging because Stormy had got her products in Walmart and Sally, Target or whatever. But they were still drowning. They were still drowning. Stormy has not been. And that's her biggest downfall. She's in her own way. Stormy is in her way and her mom is in her way. Stormy does not want to take accountability. She doesn't want, she's too doggone greedy. She's money hungry to the point where no matter how much money she makes, she's not going to be able to enjoy it fully because she's, it, she's spending it as she get it. Fast as it come in, it has to go out. So I don't have any type of, I don't have any type of sympathy for her, especially when she's talking about everything that was do done to her and she playing victim. But two seasons ago, Stormy was doing a, um, a giveaway at Christmas time. And if she had no intentions of paying that, uh, paying that prize out of $50,000, Ain't that considered fraud? And it has to be fraud because if she didn't have the money to pay somebody, she didn't. She can't give what she ain't got. So to me, that's fraud. But while her and Betty up here bragging on Stormy and what Stormy supposedly have or what they would like for Stormy to have, they could have used all that energy to pack up all of them people orders that put the uh, put the complaints on the Better Business Bureau. All the money that that they collected, they could have been sending out orders, but instead they were so busy watching what Melody was doing, trying to tear down what Melody was doing, when it didn't even concern them. And that's why Stormy can't call nobody else a bad business person because she still has not mastered business.
She talking about they put, they frozen her assets and stuff like that to the point where she couldn't pay anybody and just took all her money. Stormy, she needs to get a grip because she didn't do her homework. She didn't do her due diligence to herself. That's why I say B. Simone couldn't have been, she, she can't be a watcher of Love and Mary Tunsville because there were so many things that Stormy said that I believe that B. Simone missed the opportunity to fact check her at that time. I, like I say, I just don't have any type of sympathy for Stormy at all because even though she want to cry victim, play, you know, cry wolf, I believe Stormy did it to herself. I really do. And the way she acted on Love and Mary Tunsville, I just feel as though Stormy had, she didn't, if she hadn't have been found out, if she hadn't have been exposed, she would have continued to do the same thing she's been doing. Just the same as she did for the lady on TikTok. Had Stormy not been exposed, she didn't give a doggone about blocking that lady or being rude to that lady. That's why I say Stormy is not humble. She has not learned her lesson and she takes no accountability, which is why I have no sympathy for Stormy. Just my opinion. I'm just talking out loud. Please like, share, subscribe, comment on the video. Let me know what you think.